Welcome back guys, this is Corey from Cranberry Alarm RA3D. In front of me I've got the Note Source. It's a mock that we've uh, modified last year's shoot to simulate this year's uh, source. And one thing that I don't think a lot of teams have thought about is the fact that this shoot is only two and a quarter inches tall. So coming up we'll show how the notes drop through and how our, inter our robot interacts with it thus far. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. The first, uh, well, the simplest thing that you can try with the note source is just simply dropping the notes out. They kind of sometimes bounce on the ground, flip around, uh, roll, and two do land on top of each other pretty often. The next thing that teams definitely are going to want to try is kind of launching the notes out at speed. Since we don't have a lot of room between the, the bottom surface and the top plate, you can't really get your fingers in there to like spin or uh, manipulate the note in any way. Like last year, teams were throwing cubes halfway down the field. Uh, we don't think that this is really possible this year. Go ahead and try, Reese, to like spin the note. Um, see if you can get any weird angles. It's possible to maybe direct it one way or another by a foot or two, bouncing off the sidewalls, but generally within like a three foot radius of uh, the, the front of the source, all the notes are going to end up. Next up, we want to show how our robot interacts with this. Now we've got the robot in front of the source. It's facing uh, the shooter. So our shooter's at 60 degree angle, and it itself has a two and a quarter inch gap. Uh, between top and bottom polycarbs, you're going to notice that whenever Reese drops in this note, it's going to fly right over. Um, we are the correct distance away from the source, one bumper length. We found out, though, that if we back up a little bit, we can get the notes to consistently hit right in between our shooter wheels, and maybe we could uh, intake this way. If we're a little bit too far away, there's a chance that it falls into this front part of our robot. Maybe we're at an angle. Let's see what happens there. A little bit too far. Yeah, so um, with our setup, it's pretty inconsistent. You're probably not going to be able to line this up from across the field. Um, best orientation would be something like the kit bot, where it's set up so that if your bumper's all the way against the source, uh, you've got a clean angle to intake the note. One thing that we did find out about our robot, though, if we are bumpers against the source, our intake conveniently has a position where the notes we expect to um, generally slide into the rope, our intake nicely. Kind of like that. And we can actually run our intake maybe. So you can see, immediately get good purchase on the, the note. And it's pretty consistent. And this is with only two inch compliant wheels. I expect that uh, larger wheels would be even better for sort of funneling the, the note in. You'll notice that Reese just dropped a note into the belly pan of our robot. Um, we expect this to be a real issue this year. If a note gets stuck in your robot, you're basically out for the entire match. I mean, maybe you can drive around, try and shake it out, but it's never very consistent trying to get game pieces out of your robot when you don't intend to have them there. We did talk about a different orientation for our robot picking up from the source, but it's maybe a little bit more risky than what we demonstrated bumpers against shooter forwards. If our intake is sort of at this angle, we have pretty good purchase on the notes. 
However, if one slides over our intake, you can notice that we're probably done for the match. We're not going to recover from that note in our, uh, our robot frame. So we've been through all of the different ways which our robot can interact with the source apart from picking up off the ground, uh, which is our number one priority. These would be uh, backup scenarios, maybe nice to haves for the drivers, um, but you have to be really careful. If your mechanism isn't designed correctly, the note falls into uh, some part of your robot where you won't be able to get it out easily, you're done for the match. Thanks for watching and stay tuned on Fun's YouTube channel for more Cranberry Alarm RA3D content. This video on Fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.